Hi, I'm Dr. V. Today I'm going to be speaking with Karina, one of my medical students at the University of Western Ontario. Karina will be discussing a cancer paper, but before we get started, I'd like to share a little bit of a backstory. Personally, I'm a pain specialist. I treat pain from all over the body, but I focus on treating spine pain. With spine pain comes nerve damage, and sometimes there are medications that can strengthen the nerves. One of these medications that we use very often is called naltrexone, specifically in low doses. And in low doses, it has a different effect than it does in higher doses. That's why it's also dubbed low-dose naltrexone. Now, low-dose naltrexone can be amazing. It can be useful for treating things like diabetic neuropathy, giving people feeling back in their toes, their fingers. It can be useful for treating things like trigeminal neuralgia, which can be a shocking, like, electric sensation that goes through the face a number of times a day. And this medication can strengthen the nerves and remove these sensations from somebody's life. It's a great choice. But like many old medications, it has been found to be useful for a slew of other things. And one of these things came to my attention many years back when we had a patient with an oral tumor, slow-growing benign mass that was enca encapsulating a branch of a nerve. She had oral nerve pain, and we gave her this medication to treat her nerve pain by strengthening that branch, hoping to strengthen it enough that the weight of that tumor, that benign mass, was not going to give her discomfort. Well, something amazing happened. Her tumor completely died. The mass was gone. I couldn't believe it. I was so impressed. I looked through all of the medical literature I could find. And case after case after case after case, I, I saw there were so many examples where low-dose naltrexone was used in cancer therapy, affecting mortality, saving people's lives, getting the body to recognize its own cancer and kill it, destroy it, get rid of it, so that that person was safe again. This was amazing. What an impact. And so this is a task I gave Karina. Karina owned this task. She really did a phenomenal job. This paper was published in December of 2020, and I wanted to showcase some of those findings and highlight her contribution by interviewing her as our lead author today. So Karina, for our viewers, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you become my mentee? And how did you end up becoming the lead author of this study? So um, currently I'm a second year medical student at Western University. Um, but I met Dr. V a couple of years ago when I was doing my undergrad degree here in Toronto. Uh, we actually met through another one of his students, and he gave us both uh, the opportunity to shadow and observe him doing procedures in the clinic, as well as some uh, opportunities for research. And it was around this time that we started looking into the drug that would eventually become the center of the study. We ended up finding a lot of information that we thought would be relevant to the area of cancer therapy, especially if we could put it all together into one paper. Before we move on to the details, Karina, can you tell us how you designed this study? Yeah, so what we designed is a systematic review, which compiles the results of many different studies, all of which address the question, does this drug, which is called naltrexone, have the potential to kill cancer? So what this means is that we just put together the outcomes of all of the studies that have already tried to answer this question um, all into one paper. Uh, because we wanted to be as thorough as possible, we included studies that used cell cultures, animal models, as well as uh, cancer patients. And because this data came in so many different forms, we've included everything from case reports to randomized controlled trials and retrospective studies as well. So Karina, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about naltrexone as a pharmaceutical agent, its pharmaceutical properties, and how those can have an impact on cancer progression? Um, so the most common use of naltrexone has actually nothing to do with cancer therapy. Um, its most used indication is in cases of opioid or alcohol dependence. But when we were researching this drug, we actually found a lot of information suggesting that um, it has helpful properties uh, when it comes to cancer. Um, the major difference between how this drug is used in the two indications is mainly in its dosage. So um, for cases of opioid dependence, naltrexone is used at its standard dose of about 50 milligrams. 
and it's at its much lower dose of about 3 to 5 milligrams that we see its anti-cancer effects. The exact mechanism of how naltrexone is um, able to reduce cancer progression is not well understood, but a potential explanation involves its interaction with what's called the opioid growth factor axis. So the opioid growth factor is something that in our bodies regulates uh, cell cycle progression and can arrest uh, the growth of cells. And this is exactly what we want to target with potential cancer therapy because, um, well, what is cancer? It's a bunch of rapidly and uncontrollably dividing cells. So at low doses, naltrexone inhibits the receptor for opioid growth factor. So initially, it actually uh, stops its effect. But what that does is because the blockade is only intermittent, it actually causes an upregulation of opioid growth factor. And as a result, um, we can get a more robust response and a more powerful regulation of the cell cycle. So uh, this is a potential explanation of how low-dose naltrexone um, is able to do that. But as I mentioned, this uh, mechanism still uh, has yet to be better understood. So Karina, when you started this review, what were you hoping to find well, obviously, the big question we wanted to answer was, does naltrexone kill cancer? Uh, we wanted to understand whether there's potential to use this drug in cancer therapy. Essentially, could this be something that we might be able to add to our arsenal and be able to give patients a second chance when they've exhausted all of their other options? Uh, naltrexone has been around for decades. It is safe, it is relatively inexpensive, and quite accessible for patients. So certainly we were hoping to see a positive trend in its efficacy uh, among the studies that we were looking at. Um, but we just wanted to compile the basic science and clinical evidence for its efficacy and highlight the positive impact that it has on, uh, on patient survival that has already been shown in these studies. At the very least, we wanted to suggest that naltrexone is worth studying with this new indication in mind. And can you elaborate? on the findings of your review? Is there a potential for naltrexone in cancer therapy? Yeah, so um, most of the patient data comes from case reports. Um, and what's important to highlight is that all of these patients in these reports had stage three or four cancer. And at the point of uh, trialing low-dose naltrexone, they've already tried almost everything else. So chemotherapy, radiation therapy, uh, surgery, immunotherapy, and essentially to no avail. And this is a very difficult and hopeless situation that patients find themselves in, which is not uncommon in oncology. Unfortunately, patients with, um, with this disease stage also don't usually have a good prognosis. So when we were reading about patients who've tried low-dose naltrexone and were seeing dramatic improvements in their disease, we were very keen to keep digging for more. Um, of course, uh, the most obvious outcome measure with these studies is duration of survival, and the results that we saw were incredible. Um, for instance, two patients who had stage four pancreatic cancer were treated with low-dose naltrexone, and they continued to live for over three years with this disease, which usually has a prognosis of three to six months. Um, another patient had kidney cancer that had already spread to his lungs, and when treated with this drug, the disease in his lungs had gone away, and he lived for seven more years. Um, what's also interesting um, in these reports is that the positive effects of naltrexone don't seem to be limited to a specific cancer type. So in these studies, the patients had everything from uh, lymphoma, colon cancer, kidney cancer, lung cancer, just to name a few. Um, and naltrexone was efficacious in all of these. So we can't make any definitive conclusions based on our paper alone, but certainly our study does suggest that naltrexone has um, some positive benefits for cancer patients. So in addition to the human data, you mentioned that you looked into animal models and cell cultures. What kind of information did you find? What were the results? Yeah, so we looked at these sorts of studies because I think it can be helpful to see that clinical reports are supported by basic science research. All of the studies that worked with animal models or cell cultures were randomized controlled trials, and their results aligned quite well with the clinical reports. Of course, these kinds of studies can't answer that burning question of whether naltrexone can improve survival for a cancer patient, but it does provide us with some uh, important information, um, including outcomes and 
a better understanding of how naltrexone works on a more cellular level. So for instance, what if giving naltrexone to an animal means that the time that it would take for a tumor to develop is much longer? Or what if by the end of the study, the animal doesn't develop a tumor at all? And this is exactly what the results of these studies were showing. This is significant because uh, it suggests not only a potential improvement in survival duration, but also an improvement in quality of life. Because in a human patient, a delay in the growth of their tumor also translates to a delay in all of the uh, debilitating physiological symptoms that come with having a significantly sized tumor in your body. When it comes to looking at cell culture studies, uh, looking at cells is kind of like looking at very, very small tumors. Uh, these are rapidly and uncontrollably dividing cancer cells and naltrexone is able to reduce their number, which was the outcome that these studies were looking at. Um, again, in a patient, this would translate to uh, smaller, fewer, and uh, slower growing tumors, which again would mean an improved quality of life. And to many cancer patients, an improvement in their quality of life can be um, just as important as prolonging its duration, because a lot of cancer patients don't just ask, how long will I live? They also ask, how will I be living? Wow, Karina. It sounds like everybody should have been talking about this for years and years. How come we haven't been hearing about it? You're right. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that this is the first comprehensive review of this drug and how it impacts cancer progression outcomes. Nothing like this paper has been published before, even though all of this data is already out there. And that's really the point of why we did this review, so that we can provide a resource that compiles all of this information into one paper, and so that the next group of researchers and the group after that don't need to go digging for this information. Instead, they can use it to push the field forward and hopefully eventually apply it clinically to save lives. Um, we are all really excited to see how low-dose naltrexone can impact the future of cancer management. So Karina, it seems like you guys found a safe, cheap, and widely available medication that can have a dramatic impact in late-stage cancer. What do you think are the future steps in treatment and research with low-dose naltrexone? I personally think that this is a very promising area of research because there's still a lot to be investigated. Uh, Low-dose naltrexone has the potential to bring people back from the brink of death and uh, really help them in the most dire circumstances. But as I mentioned previously, its mechanism of action still has to be established. Um, and we need to um, do more clinical trials. So in our review, we included studies that had patients with lung and colon cancer. And together with breast and prostate cancers, these are responsible for over 50% of all cancer mortality. So it would be really important to conduct randomized controlled trials, as well as uh, prospective open-label clinical trials to understand how naltrexone can impact these conditions. It would also be important to investigate um, and optimize the dosage of naltrexone because our data actually shows that increased or continuous dosing of naltrexone can actually increase the rate of cancer growth. So understanding the frequency and dosage would be very, very important. Uh, we also don't know at this point how long people should be on this drug for. Uh, there were some patients that were on it for six months and then they discontinued and they remained disease free whereas others who were on the exact same uh, dosing timeline, uh, once they stopped the drug, their disease came back. And we don't exactly know the difference between these cases, but we're really excited to eventually find out and uh, get some reliable data. And really finding all of these questions that still have to be answered was another reason that we did this review. Um, in order to understand what still has to be investigated, while establishing what we already know. So we ourselves didn't have to count the cells in the cultures or treat the animals or do the reports on the patients. We just had to compile all of that data so that people in the future don't have to uh, spend months searching for it, um, putting it together and trying to make sense of it. Um, and instead, they can use their time to answer all of these questions that we still have. So we are all really hopeful that this review can become a helpful resource for researchers, clinicians, um, and of course, for cancer patients. Karina, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing your research and speaking with us.
Thank you for having me. I continue to teach and I love teaching and I've got to say Karina was truly a stellar and outstanding student. And I wish her all the best in her medical studies. I'm more than confident she will be an outstanding physician. If you have any general questions you'd like us to discuss, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to discuss anything specific about your care, please contact our clinic. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video.